Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Tracy Young. Cal State Los Angeles was the only university in the Southwest chosen to participate in a national study exploring how changing rainfall is impacting coastal marine life. And joining us to talk about this exciting opportunity for both the college's faculty and students is a professor of biology, Dr. Carlos Robles. Nice to have Hi, you with Trace. us, Doctor. Pleasure to be here. Um, speak for just a little bit a moment about your faculty that you have there, because I know one of the questions I asked you on the phone was, why wasn't, say, Santa Barbara or Cal State Long Beach, because they're right at the border, why were you guys chosen instead of them? And you said, I've got a great faculty. Well, uh, that's certainly part of it. That's one of several qualities that the campus has that, that was part of our selection. If I could back up a minute, actually, we do have UC Santa Barbara involved, and we have uh, also UCLA and Scripps. All together, there's about seven universities in the Southwest that are participating in this very large institute. But Cal State's contribution is defined by two things. We have a group of five really superb environmental biologists and climatologists mm -hmm. that work in marine systems. And they've been studying this problem of salinity changes with climate for a while now. But the second quality is that those faculty um, work with a very diverse student body. If you look at the face of the Cal State student body, it's the face of Los Angeles. It's very diverse and it will be the face of the changing Southwest. And NOAA has a real interest in um, addressing representation and diversifying its workforce. There's a recent Pew study on underrepresentation in professional disciplines in the earth and environmental sciences. Uh, have the most acute underrepresentation. There's very few Latinos, very few African Americans working in the ocean sciences. So the bottom line is you'll be your faculty gets an opportunity to do the great work they want and the students will also have an opportunity at a future career. Exactly. We use these meaningful problems in science to motivate our students and give them rigorous training. And we have an excellent track record in training and placing underrepresented students in environmental careers and in PhD programs to do the really kind of important, research we need. Right. Yeah. So speak for a moment about on the bigger picture, what's the study going to involve? Well, well, we're going to focus on just one aspect of global climate change that's often overlooked. We're going to look at how the uh, salinity of the surface waters of the ocean changes with changing rainfall. So some, as uh, global climate change proceeds, some areas are going to get salty, some areas are going to get uh, more brackish. And so okay, there'll be sort of... for those of us who don't talk all the time, when, how does something get more salty or more brackish? It has to do with the runoff from the land. Okay. In fact, the whole northern ocean from Alaska down to Oregon is much less salty than most of the ocean because the rainfall there is so high and so there's so much freshwater input into the okay. ocean. So we're going to be looking at coastal communities and how they shift in these uh, regimes of salinity along the coast uh, affect their fate. And is it the small animals or organisms you're looking at or is it actually the predators? I was reading the press release, it's the predators that's of concern? Well, um, we're working with what's called a model system. That is, we, we, we're going to look at a small assemblage of animals and look at how their interaction changes and then use that as a pattern to look at much larger ocean systems. So in my case, uh, we're looking at uh, barnacles and mussels in onshore communities mm -hmm. and how they will shift. Uh, data so far shows that they're really shifting their composition. But it's not because they're directly affected by the salinity. It's because their predator, their major predator sea star, either forages or not forages depending on how it's being hampered by the input of the low salinity. Is there anything we can really do about this? Is there, are you trying to find ways so we'll do things differently or just so you can provide information and tell us here's what's happening and here's what's changing? Well, first we have to find out how things work. Okay. And, uh, you know, that, that's a real task in the very complex systems of nature. Right. But, but once we know how things work, mm -hmm. then we can advise the managers on what to do. And then you can make recommendations. You bet. All right. All right. Very Informed exciting recommendations. And by the way, congratulations for both your faculty and for your students. This is very exciting for Los Angeles. Thank you very much. For Charter Local Edition, I'm Tracy Young. California cable providers are making it possible for you to educate yourself by bringing you live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the three branches of state government. Watch your legislators, governor, and Supreme Court as they discuss and enact laws that affect your life, your family, and your profession. For politics and public affairs that shape California, watch the California Channel.